Yo, what is going on guys? This is Jonathan and today I'm talking to you guys about security clearances. I know that I've talked about this in I think another video. I can't remember which one it was, but it wasn't a video directly for security clearances and how you get them and what you have to do to get them and all sorts of stuff like that, right? So before I make this video and get into it, um, one, I might sound like an idiot talking about some of the things I'm talking about because I'm not an expert in this at all. In fact, it's just kind of something that's in the back of my mind because I'm more concerned about my job in the Air Force and I was more concerned about tech school and this and that, right? So the facts that I'm about to tell you um, are just my experiences and what I can remember from when I did all of this up until now when I actually have my top secret clearance, right? So. Um, I'm just going to run through basically what I did and what happened and some things that I think that I know, right? So starting off, I'm almost positive that you have to have some sort of like secret clearance type of thing to get in to the military. Like you have to have some sort of like confirmation like, okay, this person is trustable when you go into the military, which ultimately leads up to you getting your top secret clearance. And if you're watching this video, it's because you're gonna need one eventually, a top secret. Um, or maybe you're just curious, but for my job, like I think majority of the 3D jobs, if not all of them, and there's tons of other jobs um, in the Air Force that need this clearance, this top top clearance to do our job. Like now me, I don't even work on um, secret stuff like at all, like there's zipper and nipper. I don't work on zipper stuff. Um, sometimes I do, but like, it's not like I'm freaking doing some crazy top secret stuff all the time, you know? And even when it is top secret stuff, majority of the time it's like, oh, that's it. You know what I mean? So, you know, whatever. But it all starts with like when you join, I guess, and like you kind of have to get that whole thing out of the way. Basically, like whatever job you end up having and before that, you get a piece, piece of paper before you join the Air Force, right? Like at your recruiter's office, you get this big form and it asks you where have you lived, like what are your addresses from the past 10 years, who are you like three best friends who you would trust, like who can confirm that you lived at these addresses and your mom and your dad and your siblings and all of their information, like everybody's information, like so much stuff, right? And then basically, I ended up shipping the BMT, blah, 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 whatever. My job, again, like I obviously just said, had needs a top secret clearance. So when you get to BMT, all the people who don't have have the need to get a top secret clearance, they don't have to go through this whole process at BMT. But when you do, it is amazing because you get extra phone calls in BMT. So aside of like the three that they give you, I probably called my wife and like my, my family, I guess it was really just my wife, about maybe, this is just a guess, like at least once every one to two weeks like and it was awesome i mean it's kind of shady but it's it's totally worth it like i don't i don't know how to explain it so basically when you get to bmt after you do a bunch of in processing and stuff they're going to say okay who needs to top secret like who needs to go to the security security center or whatever they call it and you go there and then you have like this whole thing of interviews like you go sit there and they call your name and you talk to one investigator and the investigator's like okay, you wrote down this on this paper, um, and then you wrote down this on this paper, or somebody said something about this, and then they try to connect the pieces like, okay, this is your last chance to tell me, like, have you ever done drugs? Have you ever drank alcohol? Like, have you ever done this or been suspended from school or gotten fired from the job or ever have, you know, been a part of, like, a collections agency or whatever it is, right? Because they go super in detail. They'll ask you, okay, you, this is like your last chance to tell me stuff, which they always say it's your last chance. Um, I don't know why they do that. They're probably just trying to catch people, but a lot of the times you're going to hear that. And you're going to hear the question like, have you ever done illegal substances? Have you ever done illegal drugs? Have you ever smoked weed? Have you ever smoked pot? Like, you're going to hear that over and 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 you get it. So. Um, after you talk to that person, um, you're just gonna you're just gonna keep getting along the process. I can't really go into super detail about the process because I don't remember it. Like, but they have like these cool stampers, and you have this whole folder with your name on it, and they stamp it, and then they give it to somebody, and then it ends up with another person. And like, consistently through BMT, you go to the security place, ever like a lot, at least like once every two weeks, pretty much. It's basically the same as a phone call. But here is the thing about those phone calls, right? That paper that you filled out at your recruiter's office with all of your friends' information, all of your mom's information, there is some sort of miscommunication somewhere, somehow, between the recruiting part of AETC and, I guess, 
BMT ATC or something like that, right? Because the the MTIs are like, okay, you have all this paperwork, like, do you need to update it? Or they'll say like, do you need to add anything? Or like, do you need to fill it out? Because obviously they know that we already filled it out, right? But they just let us make phone calls essentially. Like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. You have to basically refill out that paperwork but it got kind of confusing because it's like, oh wait, if you already did it, then why are you doing it again? But they still let us do it. It was really confusing. I know, I know that's probably confusing to hear, but anyways, you basically have the same exact paperwork you did the first time about who, who you've known, for, where you've lived for 10 years, and who you know best, and who can confirm you lived at those addresses. And you do it again, but you get your phone at BMT to do it. They'll be like, all right, everybody who's doing top secret, come with me. You go into like the day room and then they just bring a bin of phones or wherever you do it and they'll be like, alright, so you guys have, I don't know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, sometimes they would even give us like 30 minutes to call somebody or anybody to fill out this paperwork. So, you know, I would call my friend and be like, yo, what's up dude, like I need this phone number really quick or this address really quick, like yo, can, okay, and then I would call my friend and be like, hey, like, just so you know, obviously I joined the Air Force because all my friends knew and I'm like, um, just for the record, like an investigator is probably going to like call you at some point in time or try to talk to you at some point in time. They're going to schedule an interview with you and that's all I know so far. And they'd be like, okay, cool. And then I would hang up and then I would call my wife and I would talk to my wife for like 20 minutes, like once a week almost. Like it was amazing. It was awesome because not only did I get the three phone calls, I got those two, like I said earlier. So there is just this... It's just, it's just really cool to like be able to go through that. And it kind of sucks for the other people because like you get back to like your bed and you're like, bro, I just talked to my wife. And they're like, oh, I miss my mom. And it gets really sad, but um, besides that, you again, like you just keep going back you know, at BMT, keep going back to the security office and stuff like that. And eventually you have like this final interview, I guess. I don't know what if that's what you would call it, but I talked to this master sergeant and basically they ended up taking my fingerprints that day and he just went over my paperwork again and he like typed it into the computer physically because the Air Force is kind of out of date with stuff and we went over it and made sure that it was all right and then I guess they just submit it or something but after all of that's over because that's just the first part of it after all of that is over then you go to like the federal investigators right and it's like an eighty thousand dollar process per person or something crazy like that that's why they try to weed people out of the military very easily because stuff can get really expensive um but after that i went to tech school and the only thing security related that i did in tech school was when i was out processing after i passed sec plus you had a piece of paper and it's an out-processing checklist, just like where, whatever base you're at, whatever you're doing, you're always going to have an in-processing checklist and an out-processing checklist. But you, we had to go to the security office that was in the Levito at Kiesler. If you've been to Kiesler, you're going to Kiesler, you will know about the Levito. But you had to go in there, go upstairs, and there's a security office. And this guy, like, you literally walked in, he like, okay, cool, you're good, and stamped it and left. Like, I, I have no idea what it was for. I don't know what it, what it did, but he was like, oh, what's your name? Oh, you're good. And just did. He didn't say anything. So... Um, that's another part of the problems, I guess. Then, after that, I got to my base, and then time went on. Time went on, time went on, time went on, time went on for, like, probably four to six months before I even heard anything. Like, I don't even think I heard anything about security clearances at all. Besides, like, oh, you need to get one, right? Like, it's not like you can log in to some crazy website, and on the screen it's gonna be like, you have your security clearance, or you're this or that like it's not like that like you can find it in um this application that we use in the air force but it's not like secret top secret like there's codes for what level of security clearance you have and so for me i had to have somebody show me because like i i had looked at this a thousand times but it's like a code and like i'm like i have no idea what this means and then they're like oh that means you have your top secret clearance and i was like what no nobody told me like so but that's kind of how it happens but in between the time that you get it and you get to your base you're gonna have an interview with um, your federal investigator or whoever's in your area that linked up with your investigator, whatever it may be, you're gonna have an interview with an investigator. It was like an hour long. They had a huge packet of papers and they're like, can we trust you with national security? Boom. Have you ever done drugs? Boom. Did you live at this address? Boom. Why did you get suspended from high school? Boom. Do you feel like you're a danger to society? Boom. Like. Tons of stuff like that. I mean, question after question after question related to that. Like, it, those are just general ones that I can kind of remember. So they do that. Then, um, this is just what happened for me. But after I left that interview, um, they went back to my office and got, like, 
one of my coworkers who were, were really close and and then they asked him a lot of the same questions like do would you trust him is he a good worker like um I don't know. Do you trust them with national security? That's basically what it is. They have to make sure that they can trust you to give you the information that you need to have. Obviously, that's just the basics of it. So, after all of that was done, I never heard a thing again. Um, besides, and this is probably what all of you are wondering about, just to cover something, because I've been getting comments about this, is no, I did not have a polygraph, so no, they did not do a lie detector test. I've never met anybody who had our job that needed to have a lie detector test. I've heard rumors that when you go to Ramstein or something like that, sometimes they polygraph, but I can't confirm this. I have no idea. These are just rumors, so don't quote me on anything. But um, so that I haven't heard anything about polygraph for top secret, and I never got the polygraph for top secret. And then two, they do talk to your family, they do talk to your friends. I don't know if there's an organized way that they find out what friends to talk to, what family to talk to. Um, I just had my friend call me, or like I went back to Colorado when I was at my base, and he's like, "Yeah, man, like." Yesterday, your, your investigator called me as like, um, you know, we're investigating Jonathan Sullivan, he's in the Air Force, blah, 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 can we meet at a Starbucks? They met at a Starbucks on whatever they scheduled, and then they literally probably, like, they basically asked them the same questions they asked my coworker, like, do you trust him? Is he a good worker? National security? Did he live at this address? Has he ever done drugs? Has he ever done this and that, right? So they do that, they did it to my other friend. And then they did it to my mom. And I don't think they did it to anybody else because nobody told me. And usually they're gonna be like, why are they investigating you? Can you, like, wh who is this? So, um, but I mean, besides that, at, at the end of all of that, like I said before, I ended up with my top secret clearance. Like, I don't even know when I got it. I just checked the, the like, the website. It's called the VMPF. You'll learn about it if you join the Air Force eventually. But it's just an application we use for like personal information, like our duty history and our assignments and stuff like that, so. But it was on there and it was like, it's not like a code of numbers, it's, it's a code of like acronyms because there's tons of acronyms in the military and like it just it, it just classifies like where you're at with that and stuff like that. So it's actually a little like a step up from um, top secret I, I was told by the senior master sergeant so I'm not actually sure um, what that means, whatever. But anyways that is my experience with getting my top secret clearance. Um, it's really easy, it's not like you have to slave away to get it, you just answer questions. You don't lie, you, that's it, that's literally it. So anyways, thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I have no idea how long it was, but it felt long because there's a lot of information there. Um, but if you are getting a top secret clearance, definitely look forward to calling your family and your friends uh, during BMT, um, unless they change something, but I don't think they have. So anyways, again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave your ship dates down below and any questions that you may have about this video or any video that I've uploaded or even like, why I'm wearing this yellow shirt or why these shelf legs are red or whatever. It doesn't matter. I like to answer all of your questions and I specifically like the questions that are about my life and not necessarily about the military because it's like just a change of pace, I guess. Also, I'm going to leave my art in the description, all of my Instagram, my Behance, and my Dribble, so you can go check out my artwork because like I said in my last video, I'm an artist and I work on tons of things besides YouTube. This is just another creative outlet for me. So if you're interested in that and my, my other personal life besides these videos definitely go feel free to check that out and again for the third or fourth time thank you so much for watching and peace out